for those of you joining us, we'll get started here in a couple of minutes. We'll give it a couple more seconds here and then we'll get started. All right, good evening and thank you for joining us. Um, we appreciate uh, your attendance tonight. A couple of announcements before I turn it over to our presenters. All of your cameras are muted as, as well as your microphones. So as you have questions, we encourage you to use the Q&A, the chat function of Zoom to ask those questions. Some will be answered throughout the session, some will be answered at the very end. Um, please note that the session is being recorded. A copy of this recording will be emailed to you after the session. Just as you signed up for this session, and ACAC is also hosting other sessions this week. We encourage you to check out the website to learn more about other institutions you can engage with if you are interested. I will turn this over to our presenters. I will come back at the end for a few last announcements, and we definitely appreciate it again coming. Enjoy your evening and enjoy the session, and the floor is yours, are you Bloomington? Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this overview of Indiana University Bloomington. My name is Sasha Timi, and I serve as the Assistant Vice Provost and Executive Director of Admissions for my alma mater, IU Bloomington. We are just so pleased to welcome you here and tell you a little bit more about IU and the ways that an IU experience can support you in fulfilling all of your dreams. Students, we know that these times are so different and we know that through it all you have risen to those challenges that have been presented to you and you are exploring all of your college options. We also want you to know that we are here for you throughout this entire process and while we wish, we so wish we could invite you to campus to tell you all of this information in person, know that those times are coming and in the interim, in the meantime, our goal is to bring the IU campus to you virtually and through all other kinds of means of video and self guided options. And so we're going to continue to provide those so you can learn more. So tonight we're going to talk about the ways that an IU experience can support you in your learning. So let's get to know IU a little bit. At IU Bloomington, you not only have the opportunity of an amazing campus, but you're also gonna be immersed in a diverse and welcoming community that really sets it apart from other institutions. So what will you get to do at IU? Students, you are going to get to pursue your passions. You are going to get to fulfill your dreams. You're gonna to get to explore and learn about things about you and your interests that maybe you didn't even know yet. So at IU, you will become a member of a student body that embraces diversity from all different aspects. So when you are here at IU, you would actually be studying with more than 33,000 other undergraduates who are coming from all different life experiences. They're coming from all 50 states and over 140 different countries. And they all come to this experience with varying cultural, political, socioeconomic, ethnic, and religious backgrounds. Talk about an incredible learning environment in itself. So IU has built it is built on a strong tradition of excellence and innovation, both in and out of the classroom. And so not only do you get to learn from your peers, but you get to learn from your faculty and your surroundings. So we're going to talk about that tonight. Let's start with talking a little bit about how you get to explore academically. So at IU, you will study not only at a prestigious university, 
but also one that gives you the flexibility to promote and encourage your creativity and exploration. We have 12 different academic schools that you see listed here. And along with the college are offering world-renowned academic programs. So a couple of different examples. Many of you may be familiar with our Jacobs School of Music or our Kelly School of Business. We also have our Hamilton Luger School of Global International Studies where students prepare to be global leaders who really in today's international environment, it's such a timely opportunity to really understand global and political issues. You can couple that with potentially programs from our Luddy School of Informatics, Computing and Engineering. One example is our um, global policies program that merges programs and study from those two schools. You may also be looking to become an educator. Teaching has never received more attention than the critical importance of the teaching environment and the classroom experience. If you are looking to become an educator, absolutely IU is the place for you. Through cutting edge technology, innovative teaching methods, and really real world teaching experiences, it really helps you begin cultivating your effective practitioner purpose on, in your future. And certainly another area that has received a lot of attention is our medical field. So not only does IU have the largest medical school in the nation, but we also prepare students through pre-medicine training and our school of nursing, providing students with a solid understanding of medicine and healthcare, and really preparing them for futures in a wide variety of settings. So when you think of any of these schools, um, you may be thinking about really thinking, looking at a multidisciplinary approach. So our 12 schools offer more than 200 majors to choose from, meaning there is really something for everyone. And you have the opportunity to specialize in your areas of interest, but also customizing those through combining majors into double or triple majors. You can even minor inside or outside of your primary interest and in study. So this mixing and matching can really lead to some incredible things. You can explore, I use over 4,000 classes and develop combined existing programs, or you could create your own through our individualized major program, but you'll always have that flexibility. So we wanna describe this a little bit different, differently than, than some schools. So you see here, university division versus direct admission. Nearly 60% of I use incoming students actually enter into a central advising unit called university division. Here's where students will enter their entry point at IU and have the academic freedom to explore multiple interests and get expert advice from advisors who are schooled in every single major. Then after choosing your academic program, you complete your prerequisites and are admitted into that program. So while the majority of our incoming freshmen enter IU through university division, there are 10 of our 12 schools also offer direct admission to beginning students. And direct admission is offered to students who meet certain academic criteria, and those have been listed on, our, on the school's website so you can see those. And those who qualify for direct admission at the point of, as they start at IU, will receive a notification of admission to that school after you receive your offer of admission to IU. So we know that this can get a little confusing. We'll continue throughout your process to explain this, but the point of all of it, regardless of if you enter through university division or you are offered direct admission, exploration is really what we want you to remember. Now, if it seems overwhelming to pick all of these courses or pick all of these programs, know that there's gonna be support for you all along the way. When you are studying at an institution like Indiana University, not only will you take classes with and learn from your peers that we already talked about, but you're gonna be working closely with and learning from faculty who are literally experts in their respective fields. They are leaders in teaching, in research and performance. And these faculty will teach you in a variety of class sizes and formats from the lectures that you hear about to smaller seminars and even one-on-one -on -one instruction. Our average class size, a lot of people are surprised to hear, is actually 30, with fewer than 6% of our classes having 100 or more students and a student-faculty ratio of the 16 to 1. These faculty are committed to teaching, and they are available outside of the classroom as well, holding weekly office hours, they're sponsoring clubs and organizations, and some even adopt entire residence hall floors. So you will absolutely find faculty 
who are involved and have a passion for teaching and learning as well as their specialized field. Along with your faculty, you will also find yourself in a, in a supportive environment with advisors that I already mentioned and other faculty and staff who are committed to your academic and personal success. You'll have access to these academic advisors often who will end up specializing in your area of study. And if you change your interests or you get more than one major, you actually get more than one advisor. So everyone working together as a team to help you meet your academic goals. And IU advising also takes on several formats. So they could be one-on-one, -on -one, small group, phone, email, uh, walk-in sessions even. So you will have that academic support throughout your experience. We also have academic support center tutoring locations in the residence hall, so you don't have to go very far at all to get help and support in your learning. And then our Student Academic Center will also offer individualized academic assessment and assistance, as well as a lot of classes and workshops on learning strategies for things like math and writing, becoming a strong, best, your best student, all of those things. And then everyone finds their favorite place to study and favorite place to learn on campus. And one of the most popular places is our Wells Library, which was just acknowledged uh, at the national level for being one of the best libraries in the nation. So we're excited for you to find your space and your support at IU. Additionally, when you think about your learning communities, one of the popular opportunities to consider is our Hutton Honors College. Now, this Honors College is open to students from all majors. It, it provides students with the feel of a small liberal arts college and the resources of a large and distinguished university. So within the Honors College, students are going to take rigorous courses, they're going to have research opportunities with faculty, and they're going to have other additional opportunities for scholarships and grants for study abroad. They will get to meet with visitors and dignitaries who come on campus, and there's even a Hutton Honors Learning Community. The Hutton Honors Learning Honors College is usually admits about the top 10% of our incoming class, but we also want to remind students that all students who come to IU after your first year, you could actually apply to be part of Hutton as well. So there's always, just like your major, there's always two ways to enter into this experience as well. And when we think about, you've heard me mention residence halls a lot because those are provide an important opportunity for you, not just from a living experience, but from a learning experience. So you heard me mention the living, the Hutton Honors Learning Community. We have 20 different living learning communities across campus, everything from women in science and technology, we have opportunities for students who like outdoor adventure, fitness and wellness. We have the civic leaders living learning community where students have a chance to travel to Washington DC even as part of their community to learn what it means to be a true leader in your society. So many different opportunities to take classes and live alongside students with your similar interests. And you don't always have to have a major in those programs. You could have an, a major in another school, but have an interest in those programs. There are, all of those programs are outlined on the Residential Programs and Services website, so you can start to read about them now. And when you think about where you're going to live, we have 13 different halls across the campus in multiple different neighborhoods. And so you can go also on the website and do look at the floor plans, look at the services and the opportunities available, look at a map to see where they're located and really decide what would be a good option for you. If you ask any of our students where the best place is to live, what they are going to tell you is where they lived because that is where they made their friends and that is how it would work for you as well. So we don't want students to stress so much about where the right place is to live. There's lots of different options and you get to set a priority list when you complete your application. Housing applications will open for admitted students in early February and housing assignments are made on a priority basis. So once you know what preferences you would like and once you know that you, you are likely to come to IU, we encourage you to take advantage of that process. So let's talk a little bit more about what else helps you connect as an IU student and really 
find your sense of belonging. We know that this preparation for your future is, yes, it absolutely takes place in the classroom, but we also know that along with receiving a world-class education with all of these amazing academic opportunities and support services, you will also have thousands of opportunities to find your place outside of the classrooms. So for you, it could be participating in more than 750 student clubs and organizations, not all of them, but picking from them. Everything from political and student government opportunities to social clubs and organizations, religious organizations, performance opportunities. Uh, in addition, IU has more than 70 different Greek life organizations. Students also get involved with intramural and club sports. So there's an opportunity for you to stay active, stay connected, get a little competitive and just have some fun with your friends and meet new friends. You also, when you come to IU, have the opportunity to be part of a truly world-class arts and culture opportunity and community. More than 1,500 different artistic and cultural performances each year from student music performances within the world-renowned Jacob School of Music, operas and ballets and voice and instrumental recitals, and also performances that are traveling and visiting IU from other places. So things that you would see at the IU Auditorium and professional productions and speakers that come to campus from all over the country and all over the world. Just so many different opportunities. IU, the community also comes together through IU's rich history and tradition. So IU students are incredibly passionate about both the campus and their communities. Our students have a long tradition of giving back through great events like the IU Dance Marathon, where each November, hundreds of IU students dance for 36 hours straight to raise money for Riley Hospital for Children. And since it started in 1991, this organization has generated more than $40 million for the hospital. Students, even in a pandemic, our students found a way to carry on the dance marathon tradition and continue to raise money for this important cause. So these traditions are lasting. During Welcome Week, we also offer students the opportunity to learn about each other and the richness of the diversity of their community. So the week before classes start in the fall, our campus and community come together for what we, what is called Culture Fest. It's a really unique celebration of cultural diversity that makes us one of the most international universities in the country. And at Culture Fest, student organizations, campus culture centers, local restaurants unite to help new and returning students experience this unique and diverse culture that we call IU. And our students absolutely have amazing school spirit and support their fellow Hoosiers in a wide variety of events and activities, including our Division I Big Ten varsity sports. As a Hoosier, you would have the opportunity to cheer on our 24 men's and women's varsity teams who make IU, fa IU fans just so proud to wear cream and crimson, another incredible community building opportunity. Now, you've heard me mention this a few different times. But truly, the beauty of this IU community is just the differences that we bring together and how we can learn from each other. And our commitment to diversity and inclusion goes well beyond this one week at the beginning of the school year. But it's literally built directly into the mission and the fabric of our entire campus community. As our community becomes more diverse, the benefits of our rich learning environment continue to grow. So this fall, an increase of 20% of our beginner cohort identified as what would be underrepresented student populations within higher education. And that is up from last year and it continues to grow. And that is so critical to our experience as a community. And so celebrating and supporting student diversity and having all students feel included in a sense of belonging as they bring all of their perspectives is so important. And this experience is supported through our different culture centers, our services for neurodiverse students, and an entire division dedicated to diversity education and development. This is truly a learning opportunity from all perspectives and one that is so rich and vibrant and a place where you can truly find a, a sense of belonging. Now, this happens too because of the campus that we have. 
Uh, I mentioned we would love to bring you to Bloomington and we will again soon. Uh, but it is literally and consistently rated one of the most beautiful places and beautiful college campuses in the country. And it inspires our learning. The way that it is designed with its architecture, its gardens, its open green spaces, its wooded areas, its beautiful walking paths. It, it's all intentional because the idea is that when you surround yourself with beauty, it's inspiring and it inspires your learning. And so when you are there, you think more openly, you think more broadly, and you think more clearly. And that is what we absolutely want you to experience. And when you move to this perfect college campus, you also need to think about the town that you live in. So when you move to school, a college, you're going to be moving to a new community. And we encourage you to research those communities that you're considering as well. So when you look at Bloomington, we are absolutely a college town where you will be valued as a member of that community, where you have access to great restaurants and shopping and additional theaters and more festivals, as well as a host of community and volunteer organizations. We find that our students immerse themselves in the Bloomington community from a lot of different community events, from farmers markets to volunteer opportunities to civic civic engagement opportunities. This is your town for four years and we want you to be immersed in it. So all of this academic success, this sense of belonging, it all needs to lead to your perfect future and a future that's going to change over time. We're already seeing how the world and the future of work is changing. And a big part of how you prepare for that is by getting experience. And so we have an entire suite of experiences dedicated to your learning. So when you prepare to succeed through connections to the world beyond IU, your IU education is going to prepare you for careers that haven't yet been imagined and give you the opportunity to layer and combine those programs that we mentioned earlier so that you can be prepared for whatever comes next. So we value, truly value the importance of applying your IU education in the real world while you're in school and giving you the opportunities through this experiential learning. So we're already thinking about your future. Programs like the Center of Excellence for Women in Technology, which helps female students at IU get access to scholarships and internships. The O'Neill School's Washington Leadership Program, which allows students to live, work, and learn in Washington, D.C. for a semester while receiving IU credit. These are just a couple of examples of programs that take the IU education to the next level and prepares you to enter the job market. So you may do this. For you, it may look like a number of different things. For you, it may look like research. So we're, you're, we're talking about a research one institution. Well, there are hundreds of research opportunities. And in, incredibly, there are more than 200 different research centers and institutes that are on campus that offer opportunities, not only in the sciences, like a lot of people think, but also in fields like education, business, and the arts. And that research opportunity absolutely starts your freshman year. So you can start to get access to that experience and see how it sits with you. And it may be just part of your learning, or it may introduce you to a whole different career path. Talking about introducing to a career path, a lot of people think about internships, and we encourage students to seek internships both on and off campus, both in town and nationally and even globally. We have students who do internships abroad every year. And so these internships will allow you to connect with potential employers, help you gain experience, and probably most importantly, try out future career paths to see if they really fit for you. Finally, I want to mention something that we know we will get back to. So IU is consistently rated one of the top institutions in the country for offering overseas study. And thousands of our students annually study overseas every year. Now, we know that this looks a little different right now because of the public health concerns related to COVID. But know that we are going to get back to this experience. And if you are one of the many students interested in study abroad, we are confident you will once again have the opportunity to choose from nearly 400 different programs scattered through 50 different countries in, offered in 18 different languages. 
IU is constantly rated, as I mentioned, at the top of this experience because of the global diversity of these programs and the access that students have. And I mentioned that students have the sometimes combine these. So we have students who do research or do an internship while they're studying abroad. That is not in, uncommon. And when you think about preparing for studying abroad, one thing you can do even while you're waiting for the pandemic to clear and for us to be able to continue this opportunity, you can take advantage of the more than 70 different languages that IU offers on campus. So if you want to feel confident in a language and have a new opportunity, maybe a language you've never studied, that is absolutely something you can do. In fact, we teach more foreign languages at Indiana University of Bloomington than any university in the country. So we encourage you to explore your interests. Now, we talked about support academically. If all of this seems a little overwhelming, finding a job, getting into college, we have support here too. So each of our academic schools actually has its own set of career professionals that help you find your so many ways to prepare for your future. From the internship fairs, to mock interviews, to career coaching sessions, to actually just sitting down with recruiters from top com companies. We actually host more than 1,300 recruiting employers annually. Additionally, to those who are, who are interested in advanced degrees, pre-professional programs, I mentioned our medical school, so pre-med or pre-law, we actually have an entire set of advisors in the health professions and pre-law center that specialize in assisting students with gaining entrance to medical and law school. So it's a dedicated opportunity for you to help prepare for those experiences. And when you think about preparing for the world after school, it sure helps to know that you have your networks. Not only do you have your fellow students and peers that now you have met and they are literally from all around the world, you are part of one of the largest living alumni networks in the world with more than a half a million Hoosier alumni uh, living worldwide who are leaders in the arts, entertainment, politics, business, athletics. They're everywhere and they're in every sector of the professional space. And so you have already a group of people who have one similar thing in common, and that is a love for everything Indiana University and a great pride in the academic experience that you are about to have. So that's a great leg up when you are thinking about entering the work world. So talked about a lot of different things that are going to be available for you. And now we want to talk about the steps that you take to actually get connected to that. And we know many of you have already started these applications. We have re started reviewing applications. And a little secret, we've already started releasing decisions. So some people have already learned that they've been admitted to IEO. We just couldn't wait. So all the more incentive to go ahead and start that application if you haven't already. When you think about applying to IEO, there are three ways to apply. Every single one of them is perfect. Whichever one you want to choose is the one we want to receive. So you can do the Apply IU application, which is the application for the IU system campuses with one application, one transcript, one set of test scores, one uh, essay. You can apply to any of the IU campuses. If your school set looks more like the Common Application or the Coalition for College, membership lists, we're there too. And again, you only submit one, but whichever one works for you is the one that works for us. So let's talk a little bit about what you will need to send when you submit your application. So we covered the application itself, but we also need you to complete submit an application fee or a fee waiver. We're also going to need your official high school transcript. We're going to need the IU specific essay. Now there's no mystery here. We've listed this essay on our website. So if you go to admissions.indiana.edu under how to apply, step one, it shows you all of the information that I'm including here, including the essay question. So you can look at it. We don't review the common application essays or the coalition essays. We really look at this IU specific essay. On the common application, this is known as the writing supplement. And we share this essay not only in admissions, but also with scholarships and our academic schools for their admission and scholarship consideration. Now the SAT or ACT scores, we're gonna talk about that. We do require them if you want them to be considered, but new this year is that it's up to you to decide whether or not you want them to be considered. So now IU is a test optional 
institution. And so you that means that you can choose whether or not you wish to have test scores considered at the point of admission. We've also worked out a couple of different um, opportunities that I'm going to talk about in a second. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to look for as well as when to apply. So you're going to hear me say this quite a bit, but November 1, which is coming up in just a few short days, I think we're about 12 away or so, um, is our early action non-binding deadline for highest consideration for admission as well as scholarships. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how to think about this if you haven't had a chance to get access to testing, but we'll talk about that in a second. So let's look at what it means to be test optional. And another opportunity, if you want test scores considered, is to self-report those scores. So no longer do you have to wait for the testing agency to send us your scores. At the point of application, you can actually enter those right into your application. And if you get new scores afterward that you want to have, after you apply, that you want to have considered, you can self-report more scores as well. So the test optional, I mentioned a couple times, allows you to decide whether or not you want us to include test scores in our review. You can do that at the point of application, and you can also tell us if you change your mind after the point of application. That's something different that we've done this year, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. So because we know that the pandemic has wreaked havoc on a lot of things, including the year opportunity to get access to testing. What we have done is we've introduced more flexibility into our process. So students, if you complete your application by November 1st and you don't have access to a test or you're just not sure that you want your test score considered, you can go ahead and apply and complete your application with everything else I mentioned. And then you could decide later when you get the test score or want it to be considered to have it self-reported. So the way you do this is at admissions.indiana.edu, the how to apply button again. But this time, instead of step one, you're now at step three, which is after you submit your application. There's a place for you to go ahead and change your preference from I, I don't want to have a test score considered to I do want to have a test score considered. Or at the point of application, if you've already applied and you said you did want to have a test score considered, but you can't get one, you can change and say, you know what, go ahead and review my application without it. If I get it, I might still send it in later, but in the meantime, I'm going to change my preference to test optional. If you have any questions about this, our team is ready to walk you through your personal experience, but just know that you can change when you need to and so that you can complete your application. So let's talk a little bit about how we're going to look at this application. We're going to pay most close, pay closest attention to the academic coursework. On that step one under how to apply, we've also listed our required courses, and we encourage every student to look at those and make sure that you're meeting those requirements by the time you graduate. You don't already have to have them completed just by the time you graduate high school. Then we're going to look, we also look at your weighted or unweighted GPA. And if you want us to, like I said a couple times, we'll take a look at your test scores and then the application essay. This gives you here the middle 50%. So if you think about, if you're wondering if you'd be competitive for admission, this gives you an idea of where students previously have fallen. And these are not maximums, they are not minimums. When you talk about middle 50%, it means 25% had higher and 25% had lower. Again, if you have any concerns or questions about where you might fall in this and how we're gonna review you for admission, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and our team will be happy to support your questions. I mentioned November 1st, so I'm just gonna mention it again. It is our highest recommended deadline, get to complete your application. And now we have all kinds of flexible ways for you to complete that application with or without test scores. Students who apply by November 1st will receive a notification by January 15th. But as I mentioned, some are already finding out now. So we encourage you definitely to go ahead and apply. For students who 
apply by February 1st, we have a March 15th notification. After February 1st, it's if we have space. I wouldn't wait for that. Everyone here is going to apply by November 1st. So let's talk a little bit about scholarships because this financing your college degree is so critical as well. And IU Bloomington offers several academic scholarships to recognize student achievement. So to be considered for IU academic scholarships, you already kind of heard me say a little bit of this, but you have to apply by November 1st and complete your application. Students who do not have test scores considered will absolutely be considered for academic scholarships. So don't let that stop you from completing your application. So I want to make sure that you are aware, you are, you understand that you can be test optional and you can still be considered for scholarships. In fact, our first review of scholarships won't actually consider test scores. We'll look at those after all the test scores have come in and we'll, we'll take a look at those maybe later for additional scholarships, but you don't have to worry about test scores for the scholarship process. In addition to academic, these academic scholarships, we also have our selective scholarship application and students may be eligible for both merit scholarships and the opportunity to apply for our selective scholarships. Those are the scholarships that are provided through all of the schools and through our donor funded scholarships. So we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to apply for those as well. If you're eligible, you'll receive a noti notified via email about steps and deadlines. This is a good place to remind you students that email is so critical. We are going to send you all kinds of reminders. We're going to send you a notification of your admission is one of the first places we send that notification is to email and scholarship information. So you really want to make sure that you're checking that often so you don't miss any opportunities. Now, we, we know that um, there are a number of different ways to consider paying for your, ac your academic experience. A Cox scholarship for our Indiana residents is another example of that. So these are scholarships for our most hardworking, academically talented Indiana residents who have demonstrated a financial need. And so Cox scholarships are available to incoming and freshmen across a whole different host of areas. So civic engagement, ex exploratory, legacy, research scholarship. So depending on your interest, you may be applying for those. A financial package that in conjunction with other funding will actually equal the cost of attendance. So these are incredible scholarships for you to consider and you invited to apply through the selective scholarship application, which you find out via email. So I'm going to come back to that again. Another scholarship for uh, students from all over the country is our Hudson and Holland Scholars Program. And these are scholarships, these are scholarship funds that really support our high achieving underrepresented students. This is our largest scholarship community on campus. And not only does it provide funding, but it also provides an incredibly rich and supportive community with additional advisors, additional activities, additional community building experiences all wrapped into the scholarship experience. When you think about uh, another commitment from IU to Indiana residents, we have to talk about our 21st Century Scholars Covenant. So for those of you who know you are a 21st Century Scholar, this is an incredible opportunity for you to consider having your entire experience funded as well. So the way that the covenant works at IU is that when you apply to IU and are identified as a 21st century scholar, you actually and complete all of your requirements, you actually have the opportunity for a covenant that covers the cost of your attendance here, the direct cost of your attendance to come to IU. So it's an incredible way for you to feel fully supported in a community as well as a scholarship opportunity here at IU. And for more information about all of these scholarships, we encourage you to go to scholarships.indiana.edu and you can read about all the ones I mentioned here as well as a whole host of IU scholarships and a whole search mechanism for external scholarships as well. So when you think about funding for college, yes, there's, there's different types of aid. There are 
scholarships and grants that are gift aid that you do not need to pay back. There are loans where you're investing in your future and by taking out a, a low interest loan. And there are also opportunities for you to work towards earning your the funding for your school, such as work study. So all different ways for you to consider um, how to fund your education. And you can submit the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. Now it's open. We encourage all of our students, even whether, regardless of whether you think you would qualify because you can get access to these loans through the FAFSA, we encourage all students to complete the FAFSA. And then we have dedicated professionals and counselors in our student central that are here and ready to help you consider ways to fund your academic education. So know that that support continues throughout this process as well. So a few next steps, and then we will open it up to some questions here. So when we think about applying to college, it, there are a lot of details. And I mentioned that we have a lot of them outlined on our website. So if you go to admissions.indiana.edu and you look at step how to apply, there's a step one, there's a step two, and there's a step three for every single step in this process. So you have a chance to look and make sure that you are completing the required courses, that you are looking for different opportunities to complete your application, for opportunities for scholarships through our scholarships.indiana.edu. But there are all kinds of ways to for you to make sure that you are prepared and have the information that you need. We also encourage you to seek opportunities to build leadership skills, community engagement, and that isn't just to pad your application. I think you're going to hear most colleges talk about the fact that we really want to learn who you are, and that we don't always get to do that if you've done a thousand different things. We want to see the activities that really speak to you. So another reason to get involved is to see what actually speaks to you, to see what you enjoy, what you would want to continue to do. It may influence your major choice or it may influence, you know, what you want to study or what you want to get involved in on campus. So we definitely encourage you to seek those opportunities. And then take advantage if you have access to a test. Uh, SAT or ACT, go ahead and complete that. And then if you have any questions about whether or not that should be included in your application, let us know that too. This one, this next one, we definitely want to remind you, don't underestimate the importance of this year. We want you to have an incredible year and we know it's already starting out so differently than you expected or any of us expected, but this is your time to really soak in all of the learning and all of the experiences before you start in this next stage of your college journey and your academic journey. And if you think about when you, if you were preparing for a marathon, which some of you may be, you wouldn't stop your training five weeks before race day. That would result in some pretty bad experiences on race day. Think about your senior year as that final academic preparation before you start this new, entirely new academic experience. This is where you soak it all in and take advantage of all the different classes that you have and the learning that you have, the faculty and teachers that you've already known for so many years and really learn from them. So this year is so important. And then seniors, definitely complete your FAFSA. Go ahead and get that done. That'll just be one more thing that you can check off and then you know that you will be covered. We have, uh, we will start sharing financial aid awards, including all of the scholarships that you may have received. We'll start those in February. So you definitely wanna be in the part of that first round so that you have all the time in the spring of your senior year to review your financial aid packages and make a really sound decision. And then if we haven't, if I haven't said it like five times tonight, uh, we encourage you to complete your application by November 1st. Since we're already reviewing applications, it means that you would have one decision in your pocket and you would know that you have an opportunity to come to IU and you could start your planning and start your thinking and take some pressure off of an already pressure sensitive year. So those are just some next steps that we have for you. Um, if there are questions, We'd love to answer those for you now, and then know that you can always, always connect with your IU admissions representative through our Contact Us page. Not only do we have staff, trained staff on the phones and email all day long, 
five days a week, but you actually have your own admissions representative for your area and your high school. And so we encourage you to get to know that person and take advantage of their experience with this process. So I'm gonna look at, see if there are questions here now. And I see uh, a question from Emma about how competitive is the School of Nursing, uh, which helps, to, what helps to decide if you get in? Well, Emma, I'm gonna encourage you to go to the School of Nursing website because they actually outline the criteria for admission. It is a competitive process uh, and it's one of the, it's one of the schools, one of the two schools that actually doesn't offer direct admission out right outside of high school. So 10 of our 12 schools offer this direct admission that I mentioned. The School of Nursing and the School of Social Work are two that do not. And that gives you an opportunity to begin your coursework, take your prerequisites, demonstrate your knowledge and your experience, and then apply to the school. And those application requirements are outlined on the website so you can see those directly. So we certainly encourage you to take advantage of that. And then, so thanks for the great question about are freshmen required to live in the residence halls? Actually, yes. So we know that a great opportunity for students to learn from each other happens when you are in community. And so our beginning students are required to live on the residence halls in their first year. That's the only year that it's required. There are exemptions. So if you live really close to campus or things like that, that you can request those exemptions. But otherwise we do require students to, to live on campus. And again, it's an incredible community building opportunity to meet new people and be close to your classes and have, I mentioned, advising support and academic support right in your residence halls. Take some of the, the pressure off. Great. And are the residence halls co-ed and are there any gender specific residence halls? There are floors that are, are specific, but otherwise our residence halls are all co-ed. And so you can look at your different preferences when you look at how you want to see how the buildings are structured, how they're organized, and whether you wanna consider a living learning community or whether you want to consider certain amenities, all of those are listed on the preference list. And so you can begin that discovery now. That's a great question. So I know that we are at time. So if we didn't get a chance to answer your questions, please reach out, please always reach out. And we'd be happy to help support you. So I'm gonna turn it back over to my friend, Lindsay, and we will uh, wrap up this session, but thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate the opportunity to spend this time with you this evening. Thank you, Sasha, very much appreciated. A couple last announcements for all of you and we will let you go. Um, so some quick things as we wrap up um, tonight, please note that a survey will be sent to you once this session ends. We appreciate your feedback and are always looking to improve. As I mentioned before, you will get a recording of the session that you're able to reference. And we encourage you to check out our inacac.org. It's I-N-A-C-A-C.org website for other opportunities to engage throughout this week. You can also check this website continually for updates and information of institutions and things going on within the state of Indiana. Again, that's I-N-A-C-A-C.org. That is our state association and has a lot of services available to you as a high school student. Thank you all very much for taking your time to join us this evening. Please know we are all thinking of you. We're rooting you on through this process throughout your senior year, and we are all here to assist you. Thanks again, and have a great night. Take care, stay safe and healthy. Bye.